Hey everyone, I'm Akira and in today's video we're taking a look at some of the easy amounts that are not talked about that often and they can all be obtained in less than an hour. Starting off with the Stormhide Salamander. This mount was added in the beginning of Dragonflight at a vendor in Veldraken at this location. It costs about 2000 elemental overflow, which was in the start of the expansion pretty hard to get without grinding for a few hours. However, now is a different case. To farm out a 2000 elemental overflow, all you have to do is grab your favorite flying mount and head to the Forbidden Reach at this location. Here you'll find various different sources for elemental overflow and a lot of it. In the quest hub in the west, you'll find daily quests for up to 450 overflow each. Other than that, you'll find world quests for up to 450 overflow as well. And finally, you'll find that rares spawn regularly all over the island and are marked on your map as well. Each rare drops a varied amount of overflow, but about two to 600 overflow each. So simply do either, either of these things to get a quick 2000 overflow and head back to the vendor in Veldragon to get your Stormhide Salamander. I could mention a bonus mount while we are talking about the Forbidden Reach, and that is the Ancient Salamander. This mount is a drop chance mount, but what's different about it is that it can drop from any of the rares on the Forbidden Reach, and the drop chance is rather high, about 3-5%. to So farming this one out, now that the Forbidden Reach is pretty much deserted, should be very fast and very easy. We then have the Wild Seed Cradle. It's a pretty unique mount and it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to obtain and it is guaranteed. All you have to do is a small puzzle in Ardenweald and Shadowlands. You have to help out a NPC in Ardenweald called Twinklestar. You have to find her gardening tools, which she misplaced somehow. All the tools are located around the Garden of Night in Ardenweald at these locations. There are 5 items that you have to find and they are small items on the ground so they can be a little tricky to notice at first but you can follow the video on screen to find them. The items are the gardener's basket, the gardener's hammer, the diary of the night, the gardener's flute, and the gardener's wand. And once you've collected all five tools, click on any of them to create a Twinkle Star's gardening toolkit. Once this is in your bags, head to Twinkle Star at this location. She'll now have a dialogue option that will grant you a buff called the Moon Sight. And once you have this buff, you'll see a cache of the moon appear right behind her. Inside this will be the Wild Seed Grail mount. Moving on to the Temperamental Skyclaw. For this mount, all you have to do is deliver 20 pieces of three different kinds of food to a Skyclaw in the Three Falls Lookout in the Ashes Ban right here. You need 20 flash frozen meat, 20 Toscar jerky, and 20 Nolan's house special. They can be bought off the auction house for about 6 to 10k gold in total. You can also farm them out yourself at these locations. Once obtained, deliver them to the Skyclaw and obtain your new mount. That's it. The next mount on our list is the Colossal Ebonclaw Morad. This mount is a reward for completing the Jailer's Gauntlet Layer 4 in Torghast. And if you haven't already unlocked Torghast, this will probably take a little bit more than an hour, as you'll have to complete the first part of the campaign quests to unlock the more in Torghast. But assuming you have unlocked it, go to Shadowlands, head to Torghast through the gateway in the middle of Oribos, and then on the left from where you land. This is Torghast, and in here you'll find various challenges, one of which is the Jailer's Gauntlet. It is the first portal on your right as you make your way inside. And if you haven't completed any layer of the gauntlet yet, you'll have to complete layer 1 to unlock layer 2, and so on. And to get the mount, you just have to beat layer 4. The gauntlet is pretty much just a few rooms with enemies spawning left and right. Simply deal with these, and they'll drop a ton of power-ups that you can pick up along the way to speed up the process. After 8 rooms, you've cleared the layer, and you will reap your rewards and the possibility to move up a layer for greater rewards. So, because this came out in Shadowlands, you are now extremely overpowered compared to what was the intended difficulty for this, and you will be able to clear this with your eyes closed while AFKing now and then and having your cat press your abilities. So yeah, it's pretty easy, and clearing the first 4 layers should take just about 40 minutes. From here we'll finally head to the snail mount, magma shell. To get this mount, you'll need an empty magma shell. This drops off of magma snails in this area around the obsidian citadel. The drop chance is about 2%, however if you're super lazy, you can just go to the auction house and buy one. They are very cheap, sitting at around a thousand gold, 
And once you have your empty shell, you want to head to this location here in the Waking Shores. Here you'll find a lava pool and in the middle of it is an empowered snail. If it's not up on your layer, I recommend using the dungeon finder tool to try and jump layer by joining a group. Simply click on the quests and sign up for all the groups in the Waking Shores. Once you see the snail, it's time to get your mount. What you'll have to do is get into the lava pool and interact with the snail. This will start a 20 second cast and once this cast is finished, you'll get your mount straight into your mount journal. The hard part is to survive 20 seconds in the lava. So there's a couple of ways. First, there's this toy called Everlasting Horn of Lava Swimming that you can obtain from the strong box you received from the Siege of Dragon Bane Keep event. The chance is rather low though. Another possibility is to get a healer friend to help you out. And lastly, you can mess around with your talents and spec into the most survival kind of stuff that you can possibly think of, and maybe you'll be able to live it. Most classes and most specs can actually live this. The next mount is the Slime Serpent. This mount can be earned by soloing the dungeon Plaguefall on heroic difficulty or higher. It is located in Muldraxis in the Shadowlands at this location. So all you really have to do is enter the dungeon, kill all the bosses inside, you don't have to clear any trash if you can avoid it, and it should be really easy as you should be outleveling these dungeons in terms of level and gear, and should be easily soloable by any class. Once you've killed the last boss, you want to head back out this way right here, and on your right you'll find this teleporter to take you back up to the area before the last boss. In this area you'll see that a curious slime serpent has appeared in the left slime pool from where you're facing. Simply pet the cute little guy and the slime serpent will appear straight in your bags. Next up we have Sun Dancer, which kinda looks like the 100 Exalted Reputation mounts but with a harness. She comes from a rare spawn in Bastion in Shadowlands with a 100% drop chance if you do it the right way. So. First things first, you want to head to the auction house and purchase an item called Sky Strider Glider. It goes for about 500 gold and you might want to get a couple in case you mess up in a later step where you need it. Once you have the glider, you want to head to Bastion in Shadowlands at this location. Here you'll find the respawn sun dancer dancing on the sun of the southern coast. As she is a respawn, there is of course a chance that she is not up when you arrive, but if you activate war mode before you go and combine that with the fact that Shadowland zones are pretty much dead, there is a very high chance that Sun Dancer is already up when you arrive. Also, if she is not up, the respawn timer is at max an hour. Anyway, once you've located the Sun Dancer, you want to click this statue right here to get a buff called Sunrider's Blessing. Once you have this, you need to use the glider to glide out towards a sun dancer and mount her. You'll need a little bit of height to reach her when jumping out. I did it pretty easily from this ledge just next to the statue. And once you've mounted her, you get an extra action button. Spam this until she is soothed and will return to land with you. You'll then, after a few seconds, get an option to speak with her and accept a challenge. From here, simply beat her up, just like the subscribe button, and you'll receive the Sun Dance amount straight in your bags with a 100% drop chance. Moving on to a Riddle mount from Legion, we have the Riddler's Mind Worm. This guy is super easy to obtain. All you have to do is fly around the world of Warcraft and read some pages, and in the end, you'll find a treasure containing the Riddler's Mind Worm. So, without further ado, here are the locations of all the pages in order. The first page that you need to find is page 9, and this is found inside the Legadamian lounge ground floor on the bookshelf. The lounge is in the Legion version of Dalaran. The second page you need to find is page 78. This one is found in Duskwood on the bench in front of the entrance to the Moonwell in Twilight Grove. The third page you have to find is page 161. And this one is found inside Firelands on the left rear of the Ragnaros platform. The fast way of getting here is with the Firelands skip. The fourth page you have to find is page 655. It is found in the east of the lost city of the Tolvir between the two small trees at this location. The fifth page you have to find is page 845. This one is found in the Shaft Pride Room in the Raid Siege of Orgrimma, in the far back left corner of the room, right here. The sixth page is page 1127. It is found inside the Will of Eternity dungeon from Caverns of Time, on the left side of the path leading to the last boss. 
The seventh page you have to find is page 2351 and it's found near Shadapan Monastery in Kunlai Summit by the foot of this giant tiger statue. The eighth and final page is page 5555 and it is found in Uldum at the base of this giant statue right here. Once all eight pages are collected, you have to go to the coast of Westfall at this location and inside this small crashed boat, you'll find the gift of the mind seeker, which is a treasure with the mount inside of it. Last mount on our list is the red flying cloud. This mount is a reward for reaching exalted with the law walkers and then visiting the quartermaster at this location to purchase it for about 400 gold. However, the law walkers reputation works a little different than other reputations. What you have to do is find scrolls in Pandaria and read them. The scrolls are scattered all over every zone and the way you're going to find them is by downloading these add-ons, handy notes, handy notes law walkers, tom tom and paste. The handy notes add-on will show you with numbers on your map where the scrolls are located in every zone. However, in Cross Arang Wilds, it's slightly off, so I wrote the correct coordinates for those in the descriptions for you to easily copy it into the paste add-on to get the proper locations on your map. Reading several different scrolls will get you some achievements, and once you get the achievements, you will instantly get a quest item in the mail with a quest to hand in for a huge chunk of rep at Law Walk or Cho. So all in all, there's 32 scrolls spread across the whole of Pandaria. And depending on your position while flying, you'll be able to pick all of these up in about 40 minutes. Finding them all will take you to Exalted. You could get Exalted even faster by picking up the Grand Commendation of the Lawwalkers from the Quartermaster once you reach Revered, which will increase your reputation gains by 100%. That's pretty much it for this mount and this video. Thank you very much for watching. Consider leaving a like and a sub on the way out or maybe a comment for Mr. Algorithm. And if you want to support me even further, you can become a member of my channel for just $3 a month. As a member, you'll get a weekly and daily to-do list on how to get every new mount coming every new patch in retail. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.